coming in. Yeah. If you got your bulletin, ooh, if you got your bulletin, if you'll look at it, I changed a little bit after we made the uh, bulletin. This is my bad, not Karen. Uh, we're not going to do the offering of doxology in the order that it is. Instead, uh, pertaining with the scriptures as well, we're going to bring our offerings to the altar and then take communion. So down there, just mark through those and notice it says communion. That'll be communion and offering. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I hope y'all miss me and miss us as much as we miss y'all. We <laughs> will say not so much. It's, it's funny, we get out of town and all the way up there, we're talking about church and the whole time we're up there, well, they're, they're singing right now. And, uh, we stop and have prayer for the bills, he's going to be preaching. And then we, all we think about is wonder how it went. And so, I, that's a good thing about the Lord. You, you can never get away from him and thank God at all. He's with us everywhere we go. Do we have any announcements this morning? Went through a little medical ordeal and the church had been praying for, so we appreciate that. Speaking of our, our dedication service next Sunday, invite your family. In, invite your family. Let's see how many of you can do the same Paul. And uh, if you haven't decorated your Sunday school class, Jay can talk to you about not nailing no nails, right? Uh, or Scott State. Uh, but there are ways around it. We're going we're gonna to try to make this a, non, a non-holy place. <laughs> Physically, yeah, not spiritually, but physically a non-holy place. A non-holy holy. Uh, you also find in your uh, bulletins there's an insert in there about Vacation Bible School and the Harvest Festival. Basically, we're just trying to get a team together and start planning. Vacation Bible School will be on this weekend. So, just trying to see who's interested in helping with that. Uh, next Sunday, we will not have Sunday School. We will not have Sunday school. Instead, we're going to have a fellowship meal following worship. And it's an open house. We're going to invite our 
friends, and some of you have not seen the new building, new part of it. And we're going to have a, a, a thing on the screen uh, looking back at the past and bringing us up into this point. And, uh, but bring your family, invite your friends out, and, and we're going to have a good time. Anyone else? Yes. The palm tree swing in the back. <laughs> I just wanted to thank all the ladies for feeding me and everybody for their prayers. I'm doing great. Hopefully, guys, the next week, if at all possible, I don't know, but I'm working on it. The doctor said it'd be the end of the month, but doctors don't know everything. <laughs> but I'm determined to get back out there, you know, so I can tell y'all something besides what's on TV 24-7. <laughs> But it is good to be back, and I want to thank everybody. And listen, Karen is a very sweet and humble lady. Do not be intimidated because she talks to you like this. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a risk problem. She's not one to box you. So, well, I'm not sure, but I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. Anyone else? If not, let's go forward in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for this family that we call ours. Because you're the one, you're the father that has brought us all together. You're the one that has called us your children. And Father, this morning I know that some are not here. We know that some are sick. I know that our prayer list is about half full. Father, we lift these up to you this morning. And Lord, we pray that you would have your will in their lives touch them. Lord, and let them know that you're there. Let them know that there's a church that loves them and prays for them. This and Father, Lord, as we come together, Lord, we pray that we might worship you. That you might take our humble worship, our humble praise. It's not good enough, but never will be. But Lord, let us worship you for a little while this morning. Be with us now. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those who are able, please stand. Let's sing.
this next song we've done before. I'm sure most people know this. There's a, a movie out right now with this man. God is not dead. I haven't seen it yet, so don't tell me about it. <laughs> We're going to play this song. We're going to try to do good. So just worship with us again.
scripture that we're going to use this morning, I, I preached on it about two months ago, maybe three months ago. I know it was down in the gym. And uh, you pray for us this morning as we try to deliver to you what God has laid upon our heart. In the book of Luke, I think it's in all the Gospels, but I know it's in the book of Luke. Uh, chapter 21, verse 1, Jesus is, is kind of winding his ministry down. He, he's getting to the point to where he's getting into the nitty-gritty of what he's expecting for his disciples to do after he's gone. He's telling them, these are things you need to know. You know, I, I think about, you know, Dad, when he was alive, you know, he, he, he would tell me, he said, son, this is going to be yours one day. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, and as Dad got older and as he got sicker, found out he had cancer, and he told me, he said, son, I'm not going to live any much longer. And he said, you're going to be the man, of the, the man of the family. And I said, I know that. I said, but you you got plenty of time, you know, this, that, and the other. In that last month, Dad didn't talk about dying. He didn't talk about me being the man of the house and me being the man of the family and, and it was up to me to make sure everything's done right. He started getting in some specifics. This is what I want your sister to have. This is what I want your other sister to have. This is what I want you to have. This is how I want my funeral. This is how I want you to conduct yourself. You know, he got into the specifics of it. And Jesus is starting to get into some specifics with his disciples. It, he got over the part where they really believed him. He, he kind of got through the part of where they saw him done miracles and everything. And he's talking to them and trying to illustrate to them what it's going to be to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. In the 21st chapter of the book of Luke, the first verse, and he says that he looked up and he saw the rich men that were casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a certain poor woman casting in thither two mites. And he said, of a truth I say unto you, this poor widow cast in more than they all. For all these did uh, of their superfluity, meaning of their excess, cast in, to, in unto the gifts. But she, of her want, did cast in all the living that she had. All the living that she had. Jesus said he, he watched. He was there where the treasury was and he, he watched these people. And why he said men and why he called a woman, I don't know. But apparently it must have really happened. And he watched all these men come by and kind of like we do when we see somebody begging or sometimes in the offering plate when I was a young Christian, when they go to take up the offering, I read for that front pocket. Well, that's where my offering was. And, uh, and she sat there and he watched all of these people, these men that had money, money to spare, money running out their ears, and they were pulling out coins and dropping them in there. And Jesus pointed out, he said, watch this. And he saw a woman walking up to the treasury and she took out two mites, which was very little, and she put it in the offering. What's the difference? Her offering was probably a lot less than what the men's offering was. She put in coins, he put in coins, or very little money. And Jesus said, I want you to know a truth. A truth is something that will not change. He said, I want you to see what's going on with this. He said, these men have come by, and he said, they put in their extra. They put in what they had left over. In other words, after they bought their car, after they bought their house, after they went on vacation, after they got their own private jetliner, they were willing to come by and throw in a dollar and a half. He said, look at this one. She has put in everything she's got. This is not a message about tithing. Probably want it to be, but it's not. It's not a message about tithing, but it's a message about hope. You see, when you have your pockets full, and when you give to God what is excess, what you're not planning on using, what you don't really need, He said, What have you really done? He said, You've done nothing. He said, But when you give what you don't have to give, 
He said, you've done more than all this amount of money that these others give. And I want to break that down just a little bit. When the men left the treasury, where were they going to eat the next day? They had a plan, didn't they? They had money in their pocket. Where were they going to sleep? They had their beds. They had their homes. What were they going to feed their children? Well, they were going to feed them out of the abundance that they had because remember, they just give the change that they had. Don't you look at what this woman left with. Where was she going to sleep that night? <laughs> Didn't know. What was she going to eat the next day? Didn't have a plan. What was she going to feed her children? Would you give the last few pennies you had knowing you couldn't feed your children the next day? Jesus said, look at this woman. It's not the amount of money she's given, but they have given out of their extra, and she has given all that she's had when the only plan she's got, and don't you listen to me, the only plan she's got is trusting. Church, that's one of the most awesome statements I think Jesus ever told his disciples. It's one of the most awesome things that he ever pointed out is when you give till you don't have a plan. And I'm going to bring this out in a different way than money. Have, have you ever heard, I remember as a young man going to church, I remember there was a man that sat beside me and he practiced his testimony. He sat there and he rehearsed his testimony. And when it come time when the preacher asked for testimony, guess what? I done heard it seven times. He got up and he gave his testimony. He gave it. Was it true? Yes, it was true. God had blessed him. But the point I want you to understand, it was something that he was doing, not trusting in God to let it flow from him. I, the best testimonies I've ever heard is the ones that stands up from the heart saying, Brother Mark, I don't know what I'm thinking to say, but i got to say something. Praise God, I love the Lord this morning. I want to give you everything I've got in my heart. It might not come out right. You might not make any sense out of it. But everything that God has blessed me with, I want to give it to the church this morning and let the church do with it whatever they have. Oh, the richness and the beauty of being sincere with all that I have. I thought this morning, and it, and it goes further, and it goes further, and it goes further, about giving ourselves to God. It's when we have hope in other things, then we don't have hope in God. Jay and I have had some discussions, not lately, but in, when I was in his Sunday school class, I don't know, a year or two ago, a year ago, he said something that has ne it's never left my mind. I, I keep chewing on it. He, he asked us, do you think Jesus knew that he was the Son of God or was he fully prepared on the day that he was born or the day that when he was a young teenager to become the, the, the Messiah, the Savior? He said he believed that he grew into it. Never heard that before in my life. You know, he's the Savior of the world. He was born to be the Savior. But Jesus was also fully human. And I want you to watch the progression of Christ. That the, one, the, the first miracle that we know of that Jesus done was change the water into wine. The disciples were amazed. The servants were amazed. But was it a great feat for him? Yes. It was the first one that we know that he done. But I want you to know he kept going further. He kept going further. He met a man that had a withered hand. He went a little further. It took more of him to heal the withered hand than it did to change the water into wine. It took more of him to raise Lazarus than it did to change the water into wine or to heal the withered hand. It took more of him a dying out to himself in the Garden of Gethsemane than it took in all of that. I want you to know that when he went up on the cross of Calvary, he looked at all his disciples that had betrayed him. And he even looked at the, at the heaven and said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? That Jesus went through a process of his human part dying out to God so that God might use him to glorify the kingdom. You see, Jesus started out giving a two bits, kind of like the rich people did. He gave God that, that water and wine. I'll do this. He said, woman, why are you bothering me for? She said, just do it. And so we give God his spare chain. 
change him to low cutting. If this will help him out, I'll change the water into wine. But then he found himself others wanting more. Wanting more. The, there was uh, ten of them that come to him. And they said, Lord, help us. Blind Bartimaeus, he found him by the wayside begging. And blind Bartimaeus kept hollering, Son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciples said, shut up. Don't you know who that is? But he kept screaming. He wanted more of Jesus than changing water into wine. He needed more than a simple miracle. But in order for him to do that simple miracle, there was going to have to be part of his humanness that had to die out so that his spiritualness, that God could work through him in order to do increasingly great miracles. The woman that had the issue of blood, praise God, Jesus was standing there with a the multitude and she reached up and grabbed him. And she, he said, whoa. He said, virtue just come out of me. Jesus was given more. And the longer he lived, the longer he was in ministry for God, the more he was able to give. And to the very day on that cross, when he cried out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? He was the widow. He was the poor woman that come by the ushery of God said, all that I have, Whew. all that I have is yours. My blood, my pain, my sorrow, my hope, everything that I have is yours. What was Jesus' plan? He was God in the flesh. Never faced death. He never faced darkness. He never had disease. But he rendered himself fully over to God and said, God, Father, if I'm going to wake up tomorrow, it's going to be because you wake me up. <laughs> if I'm not, if I'm, if the stone's going to be moved away, it's because you're going to move the stone away. I, I give all, he said, I render all of myself in you. He told the disciples, I want you to look at this woman. I was talking with somebody the other day that come and sat down in my office as we were talking. And I said, the greatest moments of my life is when I don't have a plan. He said, what? I said, the greatest moments in my life is when I don't have a plan. You see, when I first started pastoring full time, I went for two years without any sleep. Very little. You can ask Patsy. I had black bags under my eyes. My church would look at me and go, Brother Mark, you don't look good. Because when I would go to bed, I would sit there and think about who I visited today. Did I do enough for God? And then when I got through with that, I would start thinking about what I'm going to do tomorrow. And I would stress out and I would worry. And I would just go through all these motions. And I find in my heart, the adrenaline would get the beat. My heart would get the beating so fast. I'd just get up and go down to the basement that we had in the parsonage. And Patsy said, where'd you go? I said, well, I had rolled, tossed, and tumbled. I was afraid I was keeping you awake. This was every night. Don't you know that the men that come by there and gave the little change that they had? Now, can't you see them? Can't we we'll see? <clears throat> going out to eat the wild the mess. We're going to find your catch to eat here. I'm going to do this, do that. The five. I don't need that here. As much as I struggled trying to evaluate what I'd done for the day and what I was going to do to tomorrow, one phone call. I'm going to go visit Sarah. I'm going to go visit Billy. I'm going to see John. I'm going to go up to the hospital at 1 o'clock. Hello? Open heart surgery. Where at? I'll be there. My whole day got threw away. And it come to a point that I was laying in the bed one night, heart beating out of my chest, and I thought to myself, I said, Lord, this is stupid. This is ignorant. I'm sitting here stressing over something that I did or didn't do yesterday. 
And I'm sitting here trying to plan what I don't even know I'm going to be able to accomplish tomorrow because one phone call will leave that alone. And I've done something even as a pastor that I, I never will forget that night laying there. It was 12.02 in the morning and I said, God, I don't care. But not in the bad way. I said, God, you know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know where I need to be. You know who needs me. You know what I need to give. And I said, God, I don't care anymore. Wherever you send me tomorrow, that's what I'm going to go. Whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. If you tell me not to go there, that's not what I'm going to go. If you tell me to give this much, that's how much I'm going to give. I don't care anymore. This poor widow woman come up to the treasury. Please forget we're talking about money. She didn't have a plan. She said, Lord, this is every dime I've got in my name. Everything. And the ones that are in the uh, class, the financial class in the evening, Andy, like not last week, but the week before that, taught us that everything's God's anyway. How can you give him something that's already his? She said, I ain't got a plan. My hope is in you. My life is in you. Whether my kids eat tomorrow, it's in you. Whether I have a place to lay down or not, it's in you. And it wasn't about the money, but it was the fact that Jesus was saying, these guys are giving their spare change to me. He said, and she is giving me everything because she trusts
gave more and more and more of himself. Church, are you growing? I'm not talking about fannies in the seat. I'm talking about growing. Is your relationship with God deeper than it was yesterday? Is it deeper than it was last year? You know, he started out as somebody that other people talked about. And then we met him somewhere along the way. And then he became our friend. Then he became our brother. And now is he become all in all. Because that's what Jesus is telling his disciples. He needs to be all in all. Not only taken, it has to be given. So this morning, we're going to take a unit. We're going to come around. I think uh, the youth have got uh, two representatives. Um, I need two more people to come and serve the youth. I haven't got anybody else. We're going to come out this way and take our communion and go back around. If you want to pray in that process before or after, please do. That if it's right now, if it's 99% youth, I pray that you give it another two. Make it 2% God and 98%. Because it's that growing. The more we grow, the more our testimony is not something we rehearse, but it's a well of life bubbling up inside of us. Don't let the devil tell you I'm preaching about money today. God needs you. He needs all of us. That his life might be abundant. And he demonstrated it on the night that he was betrayed. It was up there. They just finished eating. Jesus got a loaf of bread and he lifted it up to his father. He said, Father, bless this. For them, let it become the body of my body. And let it be broken. Father, we ask you right now to bless this loaf. And every time we take it, a little, little bit more of us die. Something a little bit more of you may be wrong. That one day we might come by the treasury. When they will us up in front of the church, right before they will us up in front of the church. We can tell the church I've got nothing else to do. Hmm. Hmm. You ever notice how young people fight for stuff? And how old people every time you go to the house, they try to give you something. You ever notice that? Because the stuff they got, how do you pour it to them? <laughs> I don't know about the blessing of y'all, but it me. Every time I go to Granny, she'd give me a picture off the wall. She gave me one time one of them shock things. You put a 9 volt battery in, put it on your hand, and shock you. I'm like, Granny, what do you do with this? You can help alone with kids. Father, you took the cup, you lifted it up, and you said, this is my blood. And it's your blood. What must have been going through his mind when he said this? How much did he love us when he said this? Father, we ask you, what is the cup in Christ? At this time, when the two youth representatives will come, his family.
service this morning. I need two.